Well, hello. I'm Anton Vasilsky from Ubisoft, and my talk is Unconditionally Readable C++. So what's that about? When we write code, we have two goals. First, this code must work. And the second one, it must be readable and easy to interact with, meaning other people will read, call, use, God forbid, extend or rework your code. And uh, my talk is going to be a compilation of tips for code readability focused on conditions and better conditions to make them descriptive and verbose. It's supposed to be a meme, but the last one kind of looks like C++ contract. <laughs> so, tip number one, give names to your conditions. I gotta go fast, not as fast as David, but give, give names to your conditions. Um, so if you have a huge condition, it won't hurt to break it into simple ones and store them into the Boolean variables with clear names. That's the naming part. And then your if statement will read as a plain English sentence. If line is in range and feature is activated, we do something. But the good part is that there is no punishment for doing that. There is no performance cost if you initialize your bool variable once and then use it once. Compiler will just throw it away and bad and better part will be exactly the same for the compiler. Next tip, don't use negatives, use positive conditions when possible. Negative stuff is harder for our brain to comprehend. And when you say, if it's not disabled and not expired, it takes quite a bit for your brain to catch up. But if you say, it, if it's active and valid, it's, you get it instantly. So let's combine both. Um, yeah, if you have a st statement in parentheses that is negated, you can open it up with De Morgan's theorem, and maybe it will be simpler. So example being, if it's cold or not want ice cream, not, it hurts my brain to think what should, be, should happen for this condition to be true. But if I open it up, it's, it's not cold and want ice cream. Better? I guess so. But you can introduce an extra variable, because is cold can mean different stuff for your class or your code base or whatever. But for this specific check, it means is ice cream weather. And there is no downside in introducing extra variable for your if statement to read. If ice cream weather and I want ice cream, I guess I'll get some ice cream. So reads in English as English. Perfect. Next tip. Oh, no. I have some proofs that it takes no space. Uh, Compiler Explorer sneak peek. No optimization, is ice cream weather, takes space on a stack, there is a move, it's yellow. Some optimization, it's gone, moving on. Uh, don't bury side effects in your conditions. If you have functions that execute meaningful logic or uh, process data or whatever, uh, move them out of if conditions. Uh, save the result into the variable and check the variable. And you say, Anton, but it doesn't look that bad. But if you have a compl more complex condition, it might be clear for you where the logical part is and that everything that goes after fetch data may be dependent on its execution. But for people that will work on it after you, it might not be so clear. And then last topic that's kind of Boolean ad adjacent is toggle parameters for the function. Um, look at this function, what the parameter means. I don't know, it's hard to tell. You need to hover, you need to mismatch with the uh, header. And the worst part is if you use this function and you want to say true, false as the last two parameters, but for some reason you say false, true, and your code doesn't work, it's a pain to pinpoint why, because you will debug and you will get this aha moment kind of later. So if you don't have access to the code and you're just a user of the library, the least you can do is to document what parameters mean. But it's kind of bad because it pushes responsibility on you as a user. But if it's your function, there is better stuff you can do. You can introduce an enum to represent each of your Boolean parameters. And even if it has same values as false and true instead of like cached, not cached, whatever, 
it's still better because it forces the users of your code to verbosely say, use cache flag, true, which is self-documenting, embedded in design. Is it good? I think it's almost the best. The better would be like that, for it to take one byte instead of four bytes. Uh, another solution could be the parameter object, where you take all of your booleans, uh, combine them into one structure, and then you pass this one structure in. Uh, you can initialize it with designated initializer syntax from C99 that dropped in C20. So it's self-documenting, kind of. Then you can have default par values for your fields, simulating the default values of your function parameters. And the best part is that you can remove the ones that you don't want to customize and set only a few fields that you actually care about. And the last option, last bit, is a bit mask. So you can combine it all into one bit mask, set it, and check the bits instead of ch checking separate bools. And as with the case where we just had separate enums, it's self-documenting, because with uh, or, you actually verbosely say what you want to set, and the stuff that you don't want to set is going to be false. There also that neat syntax from C++20 where you say using enum, and then you don't need to repeat the long enum name each time. Thank you. <laughs>